The Match Ball. Hello to you. Welcome to the match ball for the Forest game. Dan here with Rob and with Moscow White as well. Now, Michael, today he's down at the actual uh, actual game. Uh, I bet he's having a great time. Yes. The show is brought to you along with Levi Solicitors, who will offer you a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Um, Do you think they offer it on uh, missold away tickets? Potentially. Yeah. Dispute resolution that probably falls under. Trade descriptions? Uh, asking us to let you know that um, they can help you wherever you are in the country um, with their conveyancing wills, probate, and plenty more commercial stuff as well. Whether in Leeds or Nottingham. Yeah. They do uh, online booking system and they do digital appointments like so. Um, what's that? What's the what? video calls? That's the word I was after, mm. isn't it? Anyway, into the game itself. How are the un- uh, employment? Employment e- law yes. experts? Do they know about that? Yes. Yeah. You know, risk of being fired, perhaps, or. You know, you feel an unfair dismissal, or perhaps a fair dismissal. Did mm. you look at me when you said that? <laughs> You're... I'm not in the mood for levity, but that was quite funny. So, yeah, good. Uh, is that Jesse done, do you think? Probably not, which is the worry, I think. Uh, I'd, I'd say it should be, but um, I don't know. I don't personally expect him to be gone anytime soon, but I don't really want to watch any more of his football. It's not good, is it? It's boring. That's what I said towards the end of that game. Yeah. and. I think I've said on this a match ball before, like it's just times when I watch Leeds and we're just so insipid. And you might look at it and go, Well, we've had more shots, so like we've had loads more possession today. But it's just crap, isn't it? Like yeah. watching them all stand right next to each other with the ball pinballing around. Like I think I said after the Leicester game, I've never seen a team have to do so little to win a game. I think they beat us two 0 with one shot on target. You got like Forest today, they've had thirty percent possession and two shots on target, and they've won quite comfortably I'd argue like they didn't really have to do a great deal well their two shots came from well the two big chances came from set pieces the first one that they scored from then there was one in the second half when we just left Sam Surridge alone at the same way that we left um, Johnson alone in the first half and he shot over um, and if it had been a bit of a better shot it was going in the top corner so that's all they have to do to win is nothing and then we'll give them a couple of goals from free kicks um, and there's an, there was an argument at half time to say, yeah, we've played well and we've had most we've had all of the match and Nyonto's done very well despite being double marked all the way through and uh keep that up. But then the second half, um Forrest made a couple of substitutions and that was the end of it. Didn't mm-hmm. do anything in the second half. So first half there was a bit of something there. We started brightly and then conceded and then we were obviously get to half time and could quite justifiably say, Yeah, Leeds are the better team and should be winning this match. But then I think that's how you've got to judge it. We were the better team in the first half and should have been winning the, winning the match. We should have instead. been three, three or four one up, shouldn't we? And instead of uh, doing sorting that out in the second half, we just became uh, a boring, incapable Turgid, side wasn't it? that lost. Yeah, and that ain't. I don't think those are the things we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. We're supposed to be playing. Even if we don't play well, it would be good. We need to win. And the argument until now has been like, is even when we do play well, we don't win. And when are we going to win? <laughs> And if we yeah. don't win against Forest, I mean, I don't know when we are going to win. Yeah, because that game was there to be won because they weren't great. But it, like so many teams in this division, even the weak ones, know how to set up against us, don't they, unfortunately? Yeah, it's a bit of a... Um, I don't know, it was certainly at the start of the season there was a recurring theme that when we had more of the ball, we tended to lose or not play as well because, yeah, there's no kind of thought of how to play through teams. I guess it's all the... Uh, it's all the Red Bull stuff, isn't it? Which is no good. Yeah, I can't say I'm enjoying it particularly much. Um, there was no clarity. No clarity in that final third whatsoever. And all the there was the argument for a while, a couple of weeks ago, when Marsh went on his rant about whether we play with width or not. And he's like, oh no, this is all... Uh, Pep Guardiola has the same ideas as me. And I was looking at our, the shape of our attack in the second half. <laughs> and then thinking back Prime to... Pep. Yeah, thinking about... And if you... Well, people can do it now. Turn on Man City against Tottenham in half an hour and then just try and do an overlay or a side-by-side of the way that we attack teams and the way Manchester City attack teams. It's not even down to whether you've got good players or not. It's about the ideas of what you're trying to do on the pitch are just worlds apart. And um, we don't have to be Manchester City, but we don't need our manager even contemplating that in part of the discussion when we go out and play as we did in the second half. Or even in the first half, we were on top, but it's not like there was a, a particular like way you could see us scoring a goal it was going to be a scramble in the box leads to us which we had a, a couple of chances off that flavor 
um, leads to us scuffing the ball in. But, but And if you don't do that, then what are you left with? Not a right lot. Patrick Bamford did scuff the ball. Oh, bless him. It was but... a, um, he, had one, he had one of his Bamfordy days today, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, I mean this is the, th- the thing with the first half, you, you do have to say in the first half that you've got to point a bit of finger of uh, blame or the players have got to take responsibility for not pre- uh, finishing the chances that were presented to them because we should have scored mm. three, maybe four, arguably, in that first half. But I've realised, in terms of what you guys are saying there, that, that second half, I didn't really watch it. I've just realised I couldn't really tell you much of what happened in that second Nothing half. Happened. I just sort of mentally <clears throat> disengaged from it. Yes. Um, and I was just going to say that, um, you know, Bielsa was fired for arguably following the mantra of do plan A better. And it feels like we're in the same place again now. And I'm trying to be entirely fair to Marsh here because there have been some nice moments, but there's so many crap moments as well. Mm, pretty much all the notes I've taken in the second half, which are very few, are just like subs coming on and off. Mm. And there was one big Nottingham Forest chance, which we missed. Um because the perfectly legal stream we were watching, um, my Sky Sports disconnected, didn't it? Yeah, Sky yeah. Go didn't work. Mm. The um, one of the things that Marsh was brought in with in his locker was tactical flexibility, or at least formational flexibility, which we may have confused when we heard about it for tactical flexibility. Um, and he will change formations, I think, at times. But three at the back today because Luke Ayling is going so far forward, and then um, certainly uh, formationally we were we we left. Jack Harrison somewhere near Leicester, I think, because I don't really know what he was supposed to be doing apart from... And then there was the second half things going on where we had Somerville, Nyonto and Harrison all playing on the left wing together and then joined by Furpo once he came on. And But, um, yeah, he's not um, showing any signs of really changing. Well, his whole deal lately has been that we're getting to the point where uh, we're getting after 10 months to be very good at what he's been trying to do for 10 months. And it's still not good enough. That's, no. That is the point, isn't so it? So it's not even an inability to shift from plan A. He still hasn't made plan A work in a way that wins matches. Um, so maybe maybe plan A is brilliant and is a great idea, but until he can actually get the players to do it, I don't think we're going to get anything from it. So what are we doing? We're just wait, we're wasting games is what we're doing ultimately. Today is the, is the first day where I've just sat here and thought he's taking us down because given that if you know if you buy into the sense that we've been building up a little bit of momentum in recent weeks and the football has been better, we've looked more dangerous. Albeit we need to caveat that by saying it was against Cardiff and then Accrington that, that we beat, and even then Accrington we looked all right against Villa though, didn't we? Apart yeah, from stupid up, concessions, sort and... of up to a point. But it feels like we've learned nothing and we've built nothing on top of what we built in the last few weeks, you, when you look at that today. He had all his weapons in the second half and we got worse. Yeah, I, I, I was really looking forward to today from the perspective of wanting to see what McKenney did and Ruta did, um, particularly when we learned that they were on the bench rather than, than starting. And I just realised the enti- their entire performances have just passed me by. I don't really know what either of them did, if anything. Yeah, I keep getting to that point with Jesse Marsh's leads where I think we might be all right or I'm looking forward to seeing his play and then I watch his play and I'm like, oh no, we're just actually quite bad, aren't we? Like, there's, there's nothing more to it. And I know um, people get, some people are still kind of defending him and get upset about how we talk about him. But it's nothing more than I watch his football and I just think it's crap and I don't yeah, enjoy it. It's, like, and not getting any wins from it either. If we mm-hmm. were if we're playing crap football and winning, then there's an argument, isn't there? But there's not really anything you can say about... Um, Forrest had... if The only difference between their record and ours before this game was the game in hand. So uh, I think they had one more win than us. Everything else was the same. Just um, they played one more game and won it. But then you actually see us together on the pitch and we can't even create chances against them in the second half and we give them soft goals. I mean, if you want a, a positive out of today, Liam Cooper, who is an old friend of Chris Wood, kept him very quiet. You didn't see Chris Wood anywhere. And yet somehow, Forrest still win. So we can play, and it's the things that go back to, um, like that goal, the, the goal that we conceded, leaving Johnson unmarked at the edge of the box from a free kick on the second ball. So when the ball's cleared, he can just shoot in. And then that's what happened in the second half with Surridge being free. The ball's been a free kick, it's been cleared, 
comes back in and there's just nobody is anywhere near their main striker. At that point, there was like six people all uh, around the D, weren't there? Because mm. we kind of looked at it and we laughed. And, and nobody like... looking at the striker who's just come on in place of Chris Wood and he has a great chance to score. And it's, those it's, that's things, a structural uh, issue, isn't it? That? Well, it's not. Structural is the, the team. It's organisational. So it's what are we doing at set pieces to make sure that when there is a second ball, who is going to mark who? And it's details. And I, I have this, I don't know. I, I think... Um, well, it goes back to what I, I, my big fear about Marsh was that I, I vocalised some months ago, which was he was all vibes and, and not detail. Yeah, and, no and he, he confirmed that in his recent, uh, the seminar that was reported on recently, where he said, you know, he's, it's almost more important than uh, the football coaching is the leadership and the environment that you create. Oh. And I think this is it. He's worked very hard on creating his leadership environment, which is obviously a, an approach with its merits. But then he's done that. And then in the intervening 10 months, like, why not go into that leadership environment and tell them who to mark on the second ball on a corner? Yeah. Um, and that seems to be the, the the bit that's not missing is, you know, it's all great that everybody's turning up every day, ready to learn and ready to, um, grow as people and and all the and show leadership qualities and get the best out of each other and turn up and all this kind of stuff. But at some point, you need to just say when the ball is coming back into the box, mark you are marking him, and that never seems to happen because we never seem to get any better at defending against set pieces. So that sort of basic organisation, you can point at um, players at that and say, well, Liam Cooper should be telling them who to mark, or uh, Max Verber should be telling them who to mark. But ultimately, that is the coach's responsibility. Um, this, in fact, oh, that, we've seen evidence of it. Sorry, we've to, seen to evidence. Neil Warnock said, "Dressing room. Remember, we had that massive uh, <laughs> rush, rush, rush." No, he, <laughs> it, it's that footage of him yelling at one of the uh, defenders who said, "Oh, I went to mark him because he was free," and he said, "No, you were supposed to be marking the other one, and if if the other one scores because I've left him free, that's my responsibility. It is down to the manager to decide how we do those." I things. was just going to say, there's there's evidence um, of of it this weekend in the sense of what Sean Dyche has managed to achieve. It's only one game, and this is only one game, but we're going off the body of evidence of, of 10 months to a year now, aren't we? Um, but Dyche going into Everton and having them defending so doggedly and a lot more organised than perhaps they were. So I can't help. I mean, I'm, I'm not a football expert. I'm just, you know, we're, I'm just a dickhead who happens to be on this show, and it's a thing we do. Um, but I've seen enough football to know when footballers need to be told what to do you know what i mean there's just there's just a lack of defensive organization isn't there and, and the same seems to apply going forward but for different reasons like we, there was a point at which we were laughing when everybody was boxed over on the far side today during that game and we're like why don't you try using some of the grass over here work mm. the ball over here instead of trying to play these really really intricate passes in tight areas where we we end up turning it over it's just, it's just very very unattractive isn't we, it so we got about three throw-ins in that phase where we were right up against their box and we never stopped and thought let's have a long throw into their penalty area it's like oh there's about 20 players over here let's just take a short one and try to fucking play through them all which is probably we just it just always chooses the more difficult option and it's like it's like that's like the stuff that we're meant to be good at because it's part of the plan but like i i made a note on 20 minutes and it was a move that ended with morgan gibbs white having a shot blocked on the edge of our area but the ball was initially in forest's half and the way we pressed was just carnage basically and harrison had run over to the right wing and they were sort of playing through us and eventually would get stuck in again and i think we won the ball but again it was just there everyone stood next to each other so eventually Forest win the ball and because our pressing's all over the place it was Pascal Strauch who believe it or not our left back was out of position and it all just looks mm. a mess like it's, it's really and that's crap. when uh, Tyler Adams had to go sprinting back mm. to bail him out and then the ball got past him anyway and it meant that their midfielder was running to the edge of the penalty area where Tyler Adams should have been if Pascal Strauch didn't need help so you've got Tyler Adams running around trying to do three different jobs and Nottingham Forest is lining up for a shot at the edge of the box. And the thing is, Marsh will say that this is all stress. The reason that the players don't have any clarity when they go on the pitch is stress because he prepares them, he gives them all the information and he gives them the tactical plans and the match plan. His and tactical then... plans and match plans are causing stress. That's mm, causing exactly, stress. Exactly, yes. And That's... it's not that they're going out there and it's like, oh, we've been given a really good plan, but now we're too stressed to, to perform it. Because even when we get chances, we, we look like panicked. Mm. But again, way. he'll just say that's down to stress. But then at some point, like, it's why why would Rutter be stressed? He came on to really do a great deal. McKenna, uh, McKenny came on to really do a good, uh, great deal. They, those players shouldn't be stressed. There's no, there's nothing really to worry them. They should just be able to come on and play. But the 
they're coming onto a field full of just I don't think anybody knows what they're doing. It was um it was just before the Villa game I read an article on the Athletic about them and it was all about what Emery has changed since replacing Gerard. And the line in the article that really stood out was that the Villa players had been just grown tired of being told what to do and not how to how to do it. Mm. And I remember reading that line and being like, Ah fuck. I think that might be something similar going on at Leeds. Like he keeps saying we all know what he wants to do and how, like, what he wants us to play like because he talks about it all the time and there's various seminars and YouTube videos about it. But then when he kind of talks about how to do it, that's when he goes back to we need to be less stressed and have more clarity. Yeah. And, and you wonder you wonder if there's more going on in the dressing room, but then I don't think there is. <laughs> yeah, you, that's the thing. I keep, you give him the benefit of the doubt and think, well, I don't see training. Mm. I don't see what's going on. I'm sure it can't be that. Well, do you know what it is? detailed video sessions yeah. and stuff, but <laughs> is this what's coming out but, of it? And the, the thing is, and people always say, you always get back to Bielsa. The problem is, we saw the absolute antithesis of this with Bielsa, which was taking ordinary players and getting them super organised, super drilled into those recognisable patterns that we all saw into a system of play that worked up to a point until it didn't work anymore because whether the, the players were burnt out, weren't good enough, all that sort of stuff, fine. You know, that can be kind of analysed on its own merits, can't it, towards the end. But we saw we had a body of evidence for three years that really, really good organisation and training, details, work and matter. And it feels like we've gone and swung to the other extreme opposite of that. And we've also seen uh, Sean Deitch compressing. He said that this week he compressed four weeks of work into four days, puts them out and they beat Arsenal. And, you know, it's the same with Emery can come in and uh, the guy at Wolves. I mean, I've been against change for change's sake with Marsh. I've been very much of the mind of uh, that we've got a good enough team to sort of stay up whatever the sort of style of play is or how um, or what Marsh kind of does. That You know, he'll play his part in it because I don't... His, his entire... this Because we are just completely demolishing him uh, individually. Like, in calmer moments, I see... Like the style of play is not without merit. It can be successful in some clubs. It work. It can work. Things can be good about it. Um, and so my feeling has just been: is we'll just let this go until the end of the season, and then so much will happen. I think he would probably. I think he might welcome the opportunity to quit if he was invited. If you said Jesse, you'd have to worry about this anymore. Go and travel. I think he would. Be, that's kind of in his mind. But I don't think um, today with his new bench full of weapons and then the way that the second half went in particular after he'd had a chance to sort of say what did he say to them about the first half that was great keep doing that and then they come out and were worse just because they Nottingham Forest made two changes so and we can't see a way to, to break it down but I'm now thinking um and also I worry if we did sack him so this is the sort of the argument against is that we go to Old Trafford and who is in charge is it Chris Armas who's just come in and is essentially is Jesse Marsh's a uh, brother from another mother. They are essentially the same person, the same coach. Like, there, there wouldn't be any different. Is it Rennie Marich? Do we put a blogger in charge, in which case, like me or Rob will have a go if, it, if it's getting <laughs> that fucking desperate. Um, is it Cameron Toshak, who, as Rob pointed out earlier, uh, subbed Luke Ailing off by mistake uh, last season? Or are we down to, are we going to have Mike Skibala Scoobs. Who hey, I... Scoob. <laughs> okay, give it scoops. I give it on. scoops till the end of the season. And I quite like it. I mean, there's almost, if it is about, because oh, I'm just ranting now, but I watched that. Uh, there was a clip of Vincent Company's first presentation to the Burnley players um, was on Twitter the other day. And he was saying in that he was talking about the approach that they'll be taking. He said, we'll go into much more detail about it. He's saying we'll, we'll want to, every situation we want to think we will be able to score a goal from here. So I'll be working on you. Um, and it's going to take months of work for you to get the idea that when our goalie has the ball, we can score from there, but I'll do it. He says, and, and one of the things you mentioned, part of that will be the weight of pass. That's going to be important for how we do this. And I look sometimes, particularly, it's old Brendan Aronson when he plays and when he tries to play a through ball and he's constantly pinging them off Rodrigo's heels. It's like somebody needs to teach him how to play a through ball into a player's path so it's not just bouncing off the backside every time he tries to do it. And there's so many... It was a pass, Nyonto has great control, and but quite often we ping the ball at him really hard, and it's only because he's a good player that he can control it. So maybe Scoobs, with his futsal expertise, can come in and teach them how to pass and control the ball. We're at the point where Tyler Adams can't even pass forward to Weston McKenney anymore, and they're, base, you know, they're best friends. You'd think anything, if any two players on that pitch could pass 20 yards into an attacking situation, and I think he got a... It got a big boo from the away end because it was Tyler Adams was 
banging it out for a goal kick when Weston McKenney was the target. And it's like, if Scoobs can teach them to pass to each other, they're on Team Scoobs. But beyond that, I don't know who goes on the touchline at Old Trafford on Wednesday night if Marsh isn't there. And that um, worries me. But then up until... So that's been my worry. But then at the end of that game, I just thought like literally anybody could probably make those players play better. Because I think it's quite an easy uh, thing is you just say to them, um, right, you're all good players. You know all the shit that he's been telling you to do for the last year? We're not going to fucking do that anymore. Just go and do something else. <laughs> and then I think the team will just immediately, I think that might be all it takes for a that team. A different voice can work. Can not it? even yeah. just a different yeah. voice. Just don't do that anymore because literally anything else will be better. Mm. Um, he's taking full responsibility, is Marsh. In the, oh, in God, the post, is he talking? Post, in the post-match comments. Yeah, um, Tom, in the comments on YouTube, actually, is asking, at what point in this game did you guys lose hope? I just only reiterate what I said before, which was I kind of just gradually f- realised in the second half that I hadn't watched any of it. I was like, I just kind of gla- kept glancing at it, but it's like, oh, nothing's happening. So, yeah. and, and I was thinking about, you know, setting stuff up in here for this stream before I realised that it got to, like, 70 minutes. I was like, oh, God, I haven't been watching it for, like, mm. 25 minutes now. Whenever the opposition opened the scoring... I tend to just think now, all oh, right, we're doing probably, that. Probably done we're it. We're going to have to chase it, right? And yeah, I don't know. I never really felt good vibes today. Um, it has been commented uh, on the YouTube comments that we're all dressed in black for a funeral, which is not correct. I am wearing a, a black hoodie. Yeah, this is blue. Is that very dark? This blue. is navy as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, actually, it's black. <clears throat> yeah, so Moscow is in black, but Rob, got the, uh, Rob's wearing blue. I, I dress in the dark. That's yeah. the problem. It is the light in here. It is, it is adjusted to make, <laughs> to be as flattering as possible this to make us. Yeah, I've just seen you just look like a floating head. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, Marsh is saying that it's difficult to keep the players upbeat in a period like this. Fucking hell, that's good. Like, mm. this is he's Mr. Positivity, isn't he? Like, it's you know, he is Mr. Vibes, that's what he does. And then it really worries me. He's done it a few times now this season where he's like, God, yeah, these players have no hope. Lost he's discipline. Like, he's commenting about the players losing discipline in the it's second It's like um, in his pre match press conference and he says, We're ready to be good now. And then once we're good, we can concentrate on being great. And it is that thing of like, You've been here nearly a year, mate. Mm, yeah, I have Jesus to find. Christ. I have to find a way to turn good performances into winning. That's our last step. Mm. It seems quite a big step. And also it feels like today, you can, I, I can see you can the do credit. The win, you can do the winning even with shit performances, yeah. you know. You're I allowed to see, do that. Uh, I could see the credit for Villa. And who else did we play? Well, we didn't lose for a while. We haven't lost for a while in the Premier League, have we? Haven't won for a while either. That's the thing. Um, but so the improvement in performances has been real and we'll need to give it all the credit and like, yeah, smashing um, Cardiff was fun. And, uh, yeah, drawing with West Ham, again, that's a game we needed to win, but you're kind of like, okay. It's all been kind of pushed along of, like, you can take it, you can take take it, as long as we do X against Y. Um, And X really was win and Y was Forest. Um, And whether we can just push that further down the road and go, like, okay, we'll take, we lose at Forest, but as long as we beat... Uh, Southampton and then as long as we beat Everton well, but... we, keep, we keep kicking that can down mm-hmm. the road don't we and um, I've, I've kind of run out of can to kick I I've, don't have the, the will to continue with this it, yeah, needs, it needs to end I've lost count now but what is the run of league wins since Chelsea is it 2-19 oh. or 2-18 he will tell he, he won't want to well, look no, at that it, statistic yeah, no, don't look at the bad statistic <laughs> look at the, the good statistic it's all about, all about the feelings isn't it um, yeah time but, for any of the kids but he is focused entirely on how to help this group in this moment and Okay, what's he been doing for the last year then? He's been focused entirely <laughs> on how to help <laughs> this group in this moment. Absolute fortune spent on this squad. It seems to be a, a much a very long running moment, doesn't it? Mm, I mean, it's, I mean, Ding, who's in the comments, is I know Ding is not a fan of Marsh to say the, the very least. Um, but it's just that the uh, the biggest disaster was winning that Liverpool game and then scraping past Bournemouth. Um, yeah, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. But there there have been concerns right across the the season after the initial. Like burst that we had at the start of the season, the eight points in four, and it all looked fine. We've been the worst team in the league since then. So, I mean, I know you know you can be selective with with stats to make them show anything that you need, but it's getting increasingly and increasingly longer that if you remove that early season sort of little, um, do you want to call it a blip, a positive blip? Can you have a positive blip? An yes. up, up, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, what, it it's like half a season since then, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, that's the other point. Sorry to interrupt. I mean, I do it all the I time, so I don't know why I apologise now. Um, but uh, halfway through the season, this is how many games have we had? Is that 20? That's game 20, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. And so we're, we're a game past halfway. Jesse Marsh will insist constantly, this isn't a relegation battle. We're still very early in the season. We're getting our, our, our new weapons in. It's all fine. 
What was happening in stoppage time? Ilan Melier is up for a corner. <laughs> if we're not in trouble, then why halfway at the halfway point of the season does Melier, uh, is he being, I presume he had permission, unless that's the, the lack of discipline that Marsh is talking about. But why is our goalkeeper having to go up for a corner halfway through the season to the, try and bail us out other things as well, like, for a point against Nottingham Forest? We know that, um, we know that this club doesn't have or didn't have in the preceding windows bottomless um, pots of money to go out and buy people. But I look at that today and I just think, sign a left back. How many times do we need to see Pascal being okay, but his body shape and his awareness and his career to this day is not as a left back. None of it points towards a particularly good skill set as a left back. So how have we found ourselves in this position um, still where they think that this is enough? And, you know, it's it's possibly fine, you know, if, if the team's on a decent run of form, but it's it's just that it's... It's like anything in football, isn't it? It's all fine margins. And just by being a bit under par at left back and not having a left back in there, it can get horribly exposed. And when we saw it in the in the goal, didn't we? I mean, it was frustrating that it was offside in the build-up to that, but then the VAR can't intervene because it's a separate phase of play. Okay, fair enough. Um, Strag was a bit unlucky to get booked in the first instance, but it was then uh, very lucky in the second half not to get a second yellow and probably got away with it because the first one was so weak. But all these little things add up, don't they? Just make you think, just just put a left back in there. I'd like one. But I mean, I, to be honest, I'm more concerned about Pascal's hair at the minute because he's looking, as I was saying, like the baseball player in The Simpsons who Mr Burns keeps getting to shave off his sideburns. <laughs> is, it, is it Daryl Strawberry? That sounds about right, yeah. yeah. But it's just getting too long at the back as well now. He's trying to get it back to the point. But he's regretting cutting it, I think. Mm. He's trying to grow it's all back wrong, to that it? point. Yeah, it's funny with the left-back thing because um, Max Verber has kind of been smuggled into the club as a left-back, but then is clearly never going to play there ever because he's gone straight into centre-back. And then when we're, um, Marsh was asked about left-back options um, and rejigging the defence while Cock was out, uh, um, he's talking about bringing Furpo back in so the idea of playing Furpo at left back seems to be just completely alien to him so I don't know we've been lied to yes yeah. <laughs> but here is your we are going to buy a left back and that everything will be fine here is your left back psych which is a bit of an odd thing um, I don't know and that again maybe we need maybe we need to play a system that doesn't rely on having um, full backs bombing up and down the wings to provide any width whatsoever if we don't have that left back we seem to be you know playing to uh less than our strengths with that we've certainly got i mean strike's a good player so again why aren't we doing some something that gets more it's destroying his confidence as well you can see it in him he's not confident doing the job that he's being asked to do Maybe, so every time yeah. he makes errors or gets caught out or whatever it, it's damaging him i do worry about that because i thought last season he started off and we were all like oh he's great Young player looks brilliant, and he just seems to get dragged down by the whole thing, kind of falling apart around him. And I thought he looked like a shell of a bloke, sort of in that real wobble. It and was uh, Mattingly, not Daryl Strawberry, says uh, Killer Rabbit. There we go. Yeah, it's Daryl Strawberry features in the same episode, though, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry, yeah. Um, do you want to talk about anything in the game before we go? Because we've, <laughs> we've actually really touched on the football, just the general sense of <clears throat> this is a lot of bollocks. Um, there wasn't a great deal that happened. I mean, it does come down to. I mean, Pat Bamford missing a shot. We had Sinistera. Should have put it in once, maybe twice. <sighs> yeah, we can look at that. We we have said that the first half was decent, um, but why wasn't the second half as decent? And because uh, that's what it needed. If we're good in the first half, but couldn't, the only thing we had to add to it was a goal. And we, why why did instead of doing that, did we get worse? That's the there was thing. um there was a nice moment at the end of the. First half, when I looked up and Ilan Melier had just gone for a wonder outside the, his penalty area. Well, mm. luckily it was only Chris oh, Wood. On Chris the ball. Wood totally saved us, didn't he? Yeah, but that was sort of part of the thing of like, I know we're having a few more chances, but we're also acting like idiots, basically. Yeah. There was still a little bit of um, players going for the same headers and yes. stuff like that, which seems that was the theme. I remember when we got battered by Chelsea at Road at the end of last season, shortly after Marsh had taken over that was we suddenly had players who had under Bielsa at least had kept a, a respectable distance from each other 
crashing into each other in midfield. And I was I was trying to work out what what was going on. But obviously those were the first few weeks and you think, okay, fair enough. Um we'll we'll work through that. And then ten months later, they're still just crashing into each other, nobody's shouting. And it's not it's not new signings doing that. It's players who've been playing together for a long time. Moscow. Mm. He's dropped the stress bomb. Oh, good. Well, if I mean, you're not with us every day, you don't understand how we feel. Everyone is aligned. We're managing stress instead of development. It interrupts any kind of process you're trying to create. We know we have to get a result. I'm focused entirely on how to help the group. Just, Put some fucking tactics yeah, in that work. Stop trying to worry about stress and yeah. do all the other do you know stuff. What, do you know what will alleviate stress? Winning some football matches. And having a plan that the players know work. Yeah. And they Jeez, in. honestly. This is it. He, he is, um, he's about environment and he's about culture. And um, and he always says that. That's He says that from way back. It's about why, um, um, I mean, you know, I spent my summer listening to him droning on in podcasts. So I I know whereof I speak. <laughs> two, two peas in a pod. Where, uh, where he's going on about um, all this stuff. <laughs> The, the, the then the detail so his first his attitude is essentially or his belief attitude is the wrong way to it. his idea is that if you create the right envir- environment and that environment doesn't have stress or it has ways of managing stress then players will just become the best version of themselves almost automatically and I think that is the part where there's a big missing piece in what he's trying to do there's nothing wrong with trying to create a positive uh, environment there's nothing wrong with trying to create a culture of leadership there is nothing wrong with trying to teach players to manage stress so that they are able to perform but it's a football a club not a ted talk but you do all that stuff well even if you even if you don't be you know too dismissive of it in the ted talk style it is but you know let's be nice for a moment give all that its credit give all that its due what's missing is somebody who goes in there and t- teaches the players how to do the football bits that are currently So what you're required. saying is we need a manager or a well, coach. Even just a coach. Even That's why, I mean, Chris Armas feels like a missed opportunity because as far as I can tell, he does all the same things that Jesse Marsh does in the big kind of environment building thing. And you need somebody to just go in and say, it's, there's a there's another clip that I see. Mike, he, he, thinks he's uh, trying to, he thinks he's trying to open a yoga studio, yeah. says Dave. There's, um, <laughs> somebody, it's from one of the footage of Mikel Arteta teaching the players. The reason that they uh, run in from the wing at Arsenal is because that they can receive the ball on their right foot, defending it from the fullback. So if you are running in towards the penalty area, you, you receive it there and the uh, fullback can't get get it to you. Whereas if you play the ball in front or trying to go behind uh, the fullback, it's 50-50. That kind of thing just never seems to... Maybe it happens behind the scenes, but there's no evidence of it having happened that the players are just not getting that kind of granular detail. They have the video sessions, they have the analysis. He, I know he, he, he says he does all this stuff, but we see the results of the... We hear a lot more about the environment and the culture that he's trying to create. We there's no we, evidence of the the counter. We're kind saying. of assured yeah. that the other things are done in a quite a dismissive tone. It's in way back in the uh, the set, the webinar that he does about um, all his uh, pressing tactics. And at one point, um, he's asked, he's like, "So what do you do when you have the ball? Do you have like ta-? oh yeah, we have tactics for attacking, but." Um, you don't have to worry about all that now. It's like that's the bit that's you, mm. you you don't worry about. You can have the acronyms, the German phrases, S A R D, all this kind of stuff. But it, what does it actually come down to on a granular minute by minute basis? Just doesn't seem to be having any it, impact. It sounds on the like pitch. the sort of training that Michael used to absolutely hate <laughs> when he was at ITV. You know, they'd send him on a, a day out with a, a leadership person or whatever. And he'd be sat there grumbling at the back. That's how I feel about all this but, now. Just just deliver some football. It's like um, when Jack Harrison last season went on the Leeds United podcast and he was talking about training under Bielsa and he was saying, I've been taught movements off the ball, which means when I get the ball, I've already beaten my player. And he talks about, he's taught... What body, spi- body shape, wasn't it? Yeah, like and that. he's talked about what spin to put on certain passes. And he talks about if I'm at... A certain part of the touchline, I know to cross to this part of the penalty area. If I'm at a different part, I cross to a different part, and again, again, and yeah, and then, like I say, and then you hear Marsh talk about these things, and it is be less stressed. Mm. 
It's like, come on. And, and the only bit of evidence we know is sort of hit the penalty spot. If in doubt, hit the penalty spot. Yeah. And it's, it feels like percentage football. But we are going around in circles here and repeating ourselves. So we, we should say it won't get rid of him. We should probably just bring this. Uh, well, what do we think is going to happen in between now and Old Trafford? Because I genuinely don't know. He's come out and he's done this I think, I think they'll press go, conference. They'll go to ground. They'll see it through to Old Trafford. We'll probably go there and win. What or, time does Roderick Sandy tweet? It's quarter five. Well, um, the wine will kick oh, in. Well, I've got both. I've only got one. The wine will kick in at about, what, nine, ten o'clock? Something like that, do we think? It's kicked in for me already. <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, draw a line under this one, uh, and we'll come back to it all through the week. Obviously, we've got a, we can have a scum preview and, uh, and propaganda and all that sort of stuff um, to come this week. But in the meantime, thank you for joining us. It wasn't the most fun, and uh, it wasn't the most analytical. Um, Michael's not here, but he's here in spirit. <laughs> oh, well, I think he'll have had a great afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I know he's, he actually just texted me and just said... Uh, uh, same shit every week. He doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, was it any better on TV? And I've just said it was dog dirt on TV. Mm. Um, and he says, for the clarity of the group, I think he should shut up and fuck off <laughs> <laughs> in this moment and all future moments. And people say that when we're uh, sitting <laughs> watching on Sky Go, we can't represent the views of the match going fan. Well, there's one. <laughs> there is one. Thank you for joining us on this one. We'll speak to you soon. The Match Ball. 